it. I just kept all the insides flush. I did not re-wet these because I have made this quickly enough that it really was pliable enough that I don't have to. And if you butcher, I'm going to have you go through that last row step with me again, the flushy. Okay, so just lay it. You're going to want to tack it to the inside of that one. So just lay one on top of the other like this. And then cut through both pieces at an angle, like this. Now let me show you with a bigger piece. Okay. So you've got them overlapping. For this, okay, it's like this. This is how it's supposed to be. Right. So then right you, you cut through, put them both on the outside and you get a better cut. So you can cut that other one off shorter if you want. All right. Then see, you just cut through both pieces. And then you discard those little ends, and then they match up. Right here? Yes. Like on that spot? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. I'm a very visual person. you got to show me. Show me what I, sometimes I can. Yeah, me too. That's why I like the videos, because I do not read directions very well. Cutting my little pattern piece there. I do not read pattern books or patterns very well. I do much better if I look at a basket and just create it. And I know a lot of people are just the opposite. Rather than be able to look at a basket and recreate that, they would rather work with a pattern that they're going to read. Can I have a flat tip tool, please? Yes. So now I'm breaking down the fibers here. And I'm going to go back over here to where I did that flush cut. And I'm going to put a clothespin on either side there just so that I don't pull this out. Now it's going to be hard to get in between because of these close pins, so I'm just going to work this direction. I came to the spot where I have it overlapped, so you have to make sure that you pick up both pieces of those when you tuck that in. I'm just going to go back the other direction so that I can continue tucking these in. Now I'm getting right on top of that clothespin, so I'm going to take it off. The other one in. These baskets, this particular one, is such an awesome craft for Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, homeschoolers. I have so many homeschooled students because guess what? You can use this as art because it is art. It is art. Arts and crafts. So it can be used and then you have something really useful and 4-H programs. I will be having many, many uh, really advanced basket classes yeah. as we grow. And I'm envisioning hopefully some of my really remote students who won't have to travel so far to actually take a class from me. So the only thing I didn't get us is the seagrass and latching. So I need to get that. How did I miss getting the seagrass? I think we were just getting everything ready and, you know, so yep. I loved it. But it is so much easier when you have everything cut and ready to go. That's why sometimes the kits are just so easy for you. 
And we do have um, that you can get the materials to make four baskets. And I tell you, it's it's just really kind of fun on a Sunday afternoon to have a couple friends come over and make a basket together. Actually, yeah, I only have a small correction on the four. Okay, so we do have a, a kit of sorts that for four baskets, but the same types of materials would probably make more like six of oh. these. So it will vary from basket it to basket, will vary. obviously, and I didn't think about that. Thank you for correcting me. It on will that. vary. Yeah. It will vary. Okay, so. And if not, you can sit here and make four and give them out as gifts. We're getting to that time of year where, I don't know about you, but I like getting things done early so that I can truly enjoy Christmas and not running around and shopping and figuring out what to cook and all of that. I, I just think some of the, the real meaning of it's been lost, and I kind of like making things on my own. And early enough so that when Christmas comes, I can watch all those sappy Hallmark movies and, you know, sit around my Christmas tree and, and just enjoy it. Okay, so if you want to... Kind of cleaning this up a yeah. little bit. It's a pain to weave with... In a mess. I just, I don't like working in a mess. It's just like when you cook, you clean up as you go along. It's just kind of how we are here. So give us just a second here. We need our lashing. Do you have a trash can over here close to you, please? No. What do you Thank you. Semi close. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Have that. We yeah. don't need that. If you want your, to use a lash buddy, yes. you want your lash buddy, and then you know what you want to do somewhere. <coughs> there. So our rims again. Check for the bad side. I hope you've been remembering to check for the bad side. Yes. All right. So, bad, bad side, side goes side. up against the inside. Yes. And you only cover that last row. I have made a lot more baskets than you. You might want to use a few more clothes pins. Yeah, oh, yeah. I tend to be a minimalist where the clothes pins come in, but... But I think as a, a quote, newbie, that it's kind of important. It just kind of just gives you that extra support. Because it can be a little awkward at first until you get, get the hang of it. It's like with anything new. So you might notice if you saw our class on the square basket, mm -hmm. which is like a tissue basket size, that we use almost all half-inch reed in that basket. In this basket, we're using half-inch reed for the spokes, but then we change sizes to a 3 8 but you could use all half-inch in this one if you wanted as well. So don't be afraid to vary your sizes. Not a problem. Half-inch, and even pieces like this, don't think that you're going to have to throw these away because later on when you learn how to make a basket using a wood bottom, these will be the spokes for those baskets. So save, save your end pieces. Scraps, yeah. Yep. Okay, so um, here's my beginning. Yep. And I'm going to end it. Oh, about another spoke over. Okay. You don't have to be as precise on these baskets, like the first couple that we've done, because we are using flat reed for the rims. One of the classes coming up will have flat oval for the rims, and I do explain the differences between flat and flat oval reed in a prior segment and what we usually use for what. Okay, now you want to check for the bad side and make sure it's mm -hmm. up against the I basket. Okay, 
Okay, so Edie has a piece here that's kind of, it's kind of hairy on both sides. both sides. So, she's picking the lesser of the two evil, and then what she can do when this is dry is just take a little piece of sandpaper, because it's just these minute hairs. Yeah. Okay, but it really looked like the bad side. Yeah. We're starting to argue with her. Yeah, and you know we're friends, we do that sometimes. <laughs> but I know that when she is arguing back that she's right. <laughs> So I put my seagrass in first. Okay, now I, is it bad that I like doing it after I get no. the ring on? Is that's, there a right and a wrong way no, on there? That's why I wanted to mention that because Edie is putting her rim on first and then she's going to go back and do the seagrass where I like to do them at the same time. <coughs> that is totally up to it's personal preference. It's what do you feel most comfortable with? Mm -hmm. And I would say that it depends on the size of the basket sometimes and just how comfortable you are with it. Sorry that I've left my text on. Family in Florida that's kind of been texting, so. Yeah, I know. My mom, she's in Port St. Lucie, and she said, I'm not going anywhere. She said, Psh. I mean, it's not like she was saying, oh, we won't get hit. It was just that I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. And <laughs> sure enough, it did go away from her area, but who knows what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't. Okay, so. so. Okay, so this is the one where I cut it at a. Yes. So, so you, can you walk me through that, please? All right. When you're looking at your piece of reed here and you're deciding where to cut it off, you're gonna you're gonna be pulling your lasher out from in between here and going up through here. So. You can cut it off straight now, and when you get back to that beginning, cut it then, which is what I'm going to say. Just cut it off straight. One over. One over from the end. Like, here's my yes. beginning. Yes, like, here's my beginning right here, right here, and yep, okay. cut it right there. All right. All right, so what I just showed her is, there's the beginning, there's one, two, and just cut it off to the right of that. For the lashing piece, this is. Okay, I can already tell this is very loose. I'm have to. That's why I put the seagrass in at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have that. Yeah. So I'm gonna go one and a half times around, just to be safe and have a long enough piece. And I'm going to measure 80 as well, because this piece was just too long for either of us. So that piece will be ready for her. And then I'm going to go where my outside was ended, which is going to be here, and I'm going to go to the right of that to start my lasher. <coughs> we made an extremely detailed video to show exactly what I'm doing right now to hide this goes up that side down this side the whole the whole uh, reason for us to do those individual little lessons is so that you can see those step by step that incremental learning and then we wanted to just then have some fun the two of us together and actually make the basket mm -hmm. so we thought it would be fun to go ahead and videotape while the two of us are making the basket and then that way if Edie has any questions something that she just doesn't quite understand or something that we didn't cover very well and hopefully there isn't anything that we're not covering well um, so now I'm just lashing now when Edie lashes her rim on, she likes to use the lash buddies. Yes, I do. And I 
for the most part on a smaller basket like this, I tend to only use my flat tip tool to help get those spaces opened up. But everyone's different. Everyone's different. This almost reminds, reminds part of this reminds me of those uh, candy corn candy. Yes, candy. yes. I was thinking that too. Aren't those like um, orange and orange white? Orange and yellow and white. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's the orange and the yellow and the white in this. I am about halfway around and I don't want to take any more clothespins off, so I'm going to go back and tighten. This is something I didn't cover real, real well. When you tighten, you follow this around and kind of squeeze that. And so you kind of squeeze it. And you want to try to get it at the same angle. So I pulled the, the lasher all the way to the right so that it goes at about the same angle over each spoke. So if you are watching this on YouTube, for example, you might want to go to our website, which there will be a link. If there's, if it's on, web, uh, if it's on YouTube, there will be a link there where you can go to one of our websites. If you're a Skillshare member, mm -hmm. you automatically can go and check out this entire class for for just the cost of your monthly membership. Because with Skillshare, I can't believe that you can pay $15 a month for all those. I know. 17,000 classes. 17,000 classes on everything you can imagine. I mean, it's not all crafts either. It's, you know, work-related things, just how-tos of all kinds. It's actually it's really neat. Business and Photoshop mm -hmm. and... Uh, how to build a website, um, how, to use Google, how to use Google Ads. Yeah. Uh, yeah, doodling, watercolor. Oh, there are some really cool yeah. watercolor instructions out there. I was watching those the other night. Now, here's what I'm saying, Evie. When you get back to the beginning, right here, this is where my ending is. So this is where I'm going to put that across there. I think I now, started in the wrong place. Now, wait, let me see. So if I start here, I want to start over here. No, don't you I? don't want to cover that. Okay, so I to the right of so it. I did good. Yeah. All right. Okay, so see how I'm angling that? Yes. So you can actually take a pencil uh -huh. and just draw. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, I'm pretty sure I covered that in yes. the first tutorial. Um, on the the example is actually on a square basket, but you do it the same way regardless. Mm. All right, so I'm going back and I'm making sure that's tight again before I pull that all the way. You are getting pretty quick. You almost kept up with me. Not too bad this time. Uh -oh. And see that, you know, that just goes to show you. I've made just a couple of baskets, and I'm uh, really kind of second-guessing the way I started this year. I, I, I'm thinking I did something wrong at my start. Oh, yeah. Just something didn't look right, so I'm going to have her show me that again. The whole time around, I'm thinking, I just... Right. Okay, so if, right. if you're doing something and it doesn't look right, then it's probably not, not right. right. And you want to stop. Me. And yeah. yeah, all she did was just stick that piece in there. Oh yeah, you're totally backwards. You're, wait a minute. What did I? Get? What was I thinking? You know? Well, this should be your first. Well, you were thinking that you remembered instead of saying, hey, can you show yeah. me how to do this? And that's the thing. I thought I remembered, and now I didn't remember. Okay. 
So let's get that spray bottle and spritz this because just that amount of. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of drying out yeah. on me. There you go. All right. <coughs> and this this is kind of a tricky part. So it is important to go back and and I think we spent quite a bit of time on showing you how to start the lashing because there obviously there can be con some confusion on that. So make sure you have enough clothespins around there. Okay. This is where you ended your rim. Mm -hmm. As you lash around it's going to tighten so you don't want to cover that first because you're likely to tighten this and it'll it'll tighten up. Okay. So you go to the right of that All right. and then you choose one that has an over. Okay. I have that tool. Those you cut off really short for my. <laughs> Be careful when you're uh, bending your outside ones over to measure where you're tucking. You should be tucking to the bottom of the row that you're tucking into. So trim one first and then test it. So this is the one that it's on top of. So go to the hole to the right of that. And on this side of the seagrass. Mm -hmm. And then this ah. down. Yeah. So it's hidden there. If, if you go for very long and this kind of gets dry, don't spray the whole basket, but just spray under where you're going to be going uh, through with yeah, this. Yeah, I totally okay. forgot that. Yeah, so that is locked in now, okay. and you're forgetting to loop, 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 loop. You're trying to tighten as you go. So wait and tighten until the end. Just loop, loop, loop with right, my... so if you're using your lash buddies, mm -hmm. then you're going to go... Lash buddy. Oops. Hello. Lash buddy. Lash buddy, lash buddy. Okay. I'll tell you, honestly, the only times I use these is on my really, really big baskets where these are so long. Right. Okay. So, then you're going to go across so that you. You bring this all the way to the edge, uh, okay. go to an angle, uh, okay. and then pull it out under the same one. Okay. <coughs> so on a smaller basket like this, what I do instead is open up that hole. Mm -hmm. I know that's not twisted. That's your main thing with the help from the lash buddy. Mm -hmm. When you have a piece that you're working with that is literally three feet long, instead of about 24 inches well, or longer than that. So I am just going around and just like hemming a pair of pants, except I'm not pulling the thread tightly enough yet. Gotcha. Then you go back, angle that across, and pull that okay. tight. Okay, so when you pull this out, take it all the way to the mm -hmm. right. Similar to the twining, having it touch, having it touch. All right. Because that gives you, because your your spokes are evenly spaced, mm -hmm. if you take this at an angle across that spoke at the same angle every time, you're going to have it, it it's going to be, it's going to match up everywhere okay. around. Okay, that makes okay. sense. And I've not looked at it that way. Sometimes it's good to just have that, just like that. I made a mistake. We cover it because if I've made the mistake, Somebody else is going to make that mistake. And then you can concentrate on an area where I didn't catch that when I was, you know, taping the, the how-tos. I, I missed that part. So. But now it makes total sense. It's one of those aha moments. Ah. That makes sense. While Edie is finishing her basket... Now that I have mine, I will, in just a minute, I'm going to pull that last piece down and do a tiny little bit of trimming. I would like to 
thank you all for joining us. Yes. It's always fun when we can make a basket together and we intend to keep doing this for our classes so that you can see that you need to order supplies and then you want to get them in or if you have the supplies at home you can sit down and weave with us. Mm -hmm. It'd just be more fun if you could interact back with us Yeah. Uh, on some of the websites where you might be seeing this as a class. You might be able to post your finished project and if that's a possibility we would love to see how your projects come out. Yeah, we would. Also, I'm going to go back here and just realign those because when they get tucked in, they can go crooked. That last one that ended went in a little crooked. You can always move these around. If you need to get the supplies to make the basket, uh, we ship out very quickly. And you can either email me at Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L, dot Lee, that's L-E-A, dot Dixon, D-I-X-O-N, at Gmail. And you can tell me what you want, and I will put a PayPal invoice out there for you. Or our website, www.pajamajoestudio.com. It will be live probably next week, and you can always go on there and order the supplies if you need to. So how are you coming along there? I'm almost at the end, but I need to You've got cut that off. No, no. no, I've just got to go back and... Can I do it right here? Yes. But then you'll want to cut it when it's loose. So over here, your inside overlap, you want to be really careful when you do that because if you cut that back far enough, it's really close. So you might want to make it a little longer next time, Okay. But we're just going to trim that off okay. too. And then that just lays in there a little a little more smoothly, okay. a little nicer. Now I want to show you one last thing here All right. about lashing. <coughs> and lashing that bottom down. <laughs> right now, I can see that it still needs to be tightened. Tightened, yes. Just because of my experience. And as you can see, you can kind of misshape this mm -hmm. if you want to, but it, it tries to go back. That's because the basket is in charge right now. So I'm going to tell you, show you how to cure that. Okay. All right, I'm going to cut that off okay. back here a little bit. The first thing you want to do is just spritz it. Okay. This I have learned over many, many years. This is another, a, a good case for doing the lashing from the outside and pulling in. So many students have told me that, well, it's hard to see this end. It's not difficult to see it if you have a tool or if you have a lash buddy. And this is the reason that I lash from the inside out. And I was taught the other way. So this is something I learned as I went. You have more leverage I'm going to start by tightening that, and I'm going to follow that over with my thumb and finger. And then I'm going to put the tool in here, okay, flat, mm -hmm. and then while I'm squeezing that together, I'm pulling out on this. Okay. Then I move over, ah. and I tug on that 
Now I see that this boat is actually leaning this direction. Do you mm -hmm. see that? I do. So straighten it up. Okay. These are just the fine, fine points. Mm -hmm. uh, just the tweaking. This is. It's incredible how much you're pulling tight. Mm -hmm. This is just that last tweaking. And then, do you see how I squeezed yes. that together? Because that outside rim was moving a yes. little bit as well. You can already tell the difference in the top. See how yeah. much tighter that looks? Yeah. And if I squeeze it now, it stays. Yeah, it doesn't move. I can misshape it. But I can also round it back up. And this just goes stay. to show you that when you're weaving, you know, you're, you, first of all, it's new. You're trying to figure out what to do. And like me, I don't, I just don't make it do what I want it to do. You just have to learn how to be the boss of it. Yeah. So then we're going to end by going up on that side, right through there. So go ahead and pull that up through. And I have to what that looks like so it sticks in my brain you well, know what I mean review that segment yes I will on our yes I will on our fine tuning because now you're going to look on the inside and you can see where it is mm-hmm yeah okay so it's hooking over like a candy cane and over go there right and go through that piece gotcha too. use your tool and go yep. through that piece so just think of it like this yeah. This is that last row. This is your your lasher. Mm -hmm. It's just hooked over there hooked like a candy cane. Yeah. Right. With your inside and outside rims. And that is shown in detail yeah. on the how to videos. How to demo of that close up. This is our basket that we made step by step. Mm -hmm. This is the basket that I made, which is just a little bit shorter. And with different colors, different sizes. Just checking to make sure all my spokes are hiding there at the top where I turn them under. And there you have it. So hers is still rocking. A little rocking, but it. sure I'll get that taken care of for me. Sometimes I have to get my big bad hammer out. Yeah. But again, if you go back and when you first do that, make sure that it's really don't be afraid of it. Okay? So I like it. No more rocking and rolling. Mm mm. I had fun. I had fun. I hope you had fun, and thanks so much for joining us. So and we're gonna we're gonna turn the camera off now. Yep. And we hope you'll join us for, for our next, next class. Yes. Yeah. Have a wonderful day.